It's great to see you this morning. Welcome. And I uh, hope you've slept very well. I did. And uh, I always sleep very well. Some way, God always put me in a deep sleep. Tisa said, you cannot believe it. When I get in bed and I put my head on a pillow, I'm gone. <laughs> She, she will try to speak to me. I'm already away. <laughs> and uh, so God gives it to his beloved even in her sleep. And uh, let's start by praying this morning and preparing our hearts for unique things that God is going to do. As we have started last night and we've touched on so many important things. It was just the introduction last night. Today we're really going to work in terms of yourself. We're going to really get closer to your heart closer to the practical things in your life, and uh, therefore, let's open our hearts for that unique ministry of God. Father, which has come this morning, first of all, to praise you. We really want to praise you with our hearts, our lips, our lives. We just come in this place, Father, to lift up your name. We say that you are a glorious God. You are praiseworthy, precious, beautiful, highly exalted, glorious, Father, we don't have enough words to just exclaim the greatness of who you are. We stand before you, Father, and above all, we declare you that you are our Daddy, our Father, Abba. And we love you and we worship you. We come this morning, Lord, with great expectation and anticipation for a move of your Spirit among us and in us. Lord, we desire your presence. We desire your fullness. We desire everything we can get from you. We don't want to miss out on any aspect of your blessings, any aspect of what you have given for us through the cross. Lord, we just come and allow your ministry to operate in our lives. So many people are broken and devastated and lonely and is desperate for deep healing. Lord, I pray for every person that's here, every single one, and those who are listening, on their screens. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just minister and touch these people, bring life into their lives. That every one of them will be changed to become like Jesus Christ. And Lord, that it will, won't take many years, but that we will see a rapid change, even in this weekend, these months, this year, that our lives will change so radically that people will be amazed what has happened to us. Lord, you are the one that does a complete work. You don't just do a little bit and leave us. You always finish what you have started. And therefore, we ask, Lord, that your spirit will move what you've started even last night. Some people you have already started the past months. Lord, we ask that you will finish and complete, that we come to that place of perfection in Christ. We want to be experience the fullness of who you are in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And therefore, Lord, from our spirit, our soul, our bodies, our relationship, our vision, dreams, finance, everything, Father, we dedicate to you. We ask that the fullness of Christ will come and manifest in us. We invite your fullness. Christ, come and manifest your life in us and through us. We invite you in, in Father. We ask that you and your Son and the Holy Spirit will just minister to each person. Help us to, to, to understand and receive the fullness of the Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come in your fullness, Lord. We don't want to miss anything. We want the character of the Father to be embraced and engraved in our hearts, in our minds. We want the, the servanthood and the power of Jesus to manifest in our lives. We want the gentleness of the Holy Spirit to come and to make us like Him, to serve, to help, to comfort, to counsel, to support. Come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let your image be engraved in our lives. And everything in our lives that's not from you, anything that's still flesh, Anything that's born out of pain, anything that's, that's uh, broken in us, come and restore and heal, we pray. And we receive that miracle today, Father. We receive your impartation, your presence now. And thank you that you are here, Holy Spirit. We can just sense that you are here. You are always there when we talk to you. But even today, you come in a special way to reveal yourself. 
because this is a special occasion where you desire to reveal your heart, your passion, and intimacy to your children. So come, Lord, and do that. Let us see your heart and understand your passion and your purpose in our lives. Father, again this morning, I declare liberty over every person's mind. I, I declare that they will be able to receive and comprehend the mysteries of God. I declare over every brain cell and every memory and every subconscious memory that the Holy Spirit can and will work in those areas. And God will heal every pain area and every dark area and every dark room in our subconscious minds. Every area where we've been split up and where there's pain and, and, and uh, where we have started to live a life of lies and deception, Lord, we, I pray that the truth will come into our lives. Release truth, Lord, so that your truth will reveal to us the lies. And as we see lies, that we can get rid of them out of our lives. Let the truth prevail, Lord. And as we know the truth, set us free. Set us free, Lord. Receive your freedom, your ministry presence. Come Holy Spirit, counselor, helper, minister to us now. Teach us concerning the plan and purpose of our Father. Receive this miracle. Thank you that you enable me and empower me and everyone that's here to listen and to receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just turn to the people next to you and say hello. It's good to see you. You're the most beautiful thing I've seen today. <laughs> Maybe you must first say it to yourself. <laughs> okay, last night we have ended with this principle that you see on the overhead. The principle of God's purpose for our life is to become the image of God. And we said the image of God is actually Jesus, who came to earth to show how God looks like. So if you want to know how Father looks, you see Jesus. Jesus is the reflection of the Father. And you know what? God wants to change you just as He will use Jesus to be a reflection of the Father. When people see you, you must be like Jesus to the Father. Jesus said, I don't do anything that the Father does not tell me. I don't do anything that Father does not teach me or show me. And that's where we want to get. You know, only do the things that Father revealed to you. And that we will actually reveal the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And you have to come to that place where you tell people, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And God wants to reveal the Father heart in your life. That you become the Father to many people. And because before you become the father, you first become the son. You become like Jesus. And Jesus is a reflection of the father. And that's, that's very deep truth that I'm sharing here with you. But this is actually God's purpose in life. It, every single one of you will come to that place where you reveal the father to this world. Every person talking to you must hear the heart of the father. Like Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Jesus said in John 17, Father, I've came to reveal you. I came to show you. Jesus did not come just to save you, to take you to heaven. That's a small part of his purpose. Jesus came, first of all, to reveal the Father. And therefore, you need to discover the Father. And then you become like the Son to reveal the Father. And that's where the blockage is in our soul area. The blockage is so deep that you do not become like Jesus and neither revealing the Father. And God wants to take all the blockage and we're going this morning into that to explain to you the blockage in your soul dimension that's blocking and stopping the flow of the, the, the character of God that wants to come through your spirit to your body. But your soul is in between. And we want to panel beat that soul. We want to get that thing sorted out. Now on the next page where we start this morning, we... Go to causes of sickness, weakness, personality dysfunction, and premature death. Now, I love to speak on this topic. Now, I don't want to go too deep in this because on this it touch on physical healing and different other things that demonic. So this is just a little bit 
a wider generalized general view of what is coming against you to cause sickness, weakness, and premature death in your life. What is causing dysfunctional lifestyle for many of us? Uh, and there's a lot of things in this that you will see. Now, on that page, I've given you a lot of things, but if you, if you follow my, my PowerPoint, you, uh, I'm giving it with that page. Uh, there's a lot of attacks that's coming to us. Now, today we're going to just focus on one kind of attack against you that try to destroy you. But there's different kinds of attacks coming from different directions. Some of it you cannot really do anything except for trusting God. Some of it you can do a lot to, to secure yourself from the attacks. But you are constantly under attack. Whether you like it or not, there's a lot of things coming to try to destroy you. And you, you need to come to a place where you are secure enough, you're living under the presence of God, where not one of these things can touch you. And that's the place in the Holy of Holies. That's the place of Christ. That's the place where you have security. Where you can say, God protect me, no sickness, no disease can touch me. No demon can touch my life. God wants to bring you to that place. All right, what type of attacks? The first one comes from people, and that's what we touch on this weekend. The effect that people have on your life um, is, is tremendous. There's so many things, uh, physical attacks, that's there. We hear daily of people who's been physically attacked, abused. And, uh, but let's talk about you people sitting here. The type of attacks of what comes from people into your life to cause pain. Um, one of the main things that cause dysfunction in our lives is the thing we call neglecting, negligence. Uh, the fact that your parents did not give you the attention and the love that you were supposed to get. That's equal to physical abuse. The fact that your father did not hug and kiss you and hold you is equal to a position of physical abuse. I want you to just hear this. Because many of you say, oh, my father's okay. You know, he was a passive guy. He never touched me, but he was all right. The fact that he was passive means actually in your emotions, you have experienced it like abuse. Because your personality only develop in balance when you receive the right kind of love. And that is physical contact skin love. And if you haven't received that, you are actually abused. That's the first thing that came to us. Then rejection. Rejection is an action where people, and especially your parents and people, push you away. Remember Joseph. He was rejected by his brothers. Every one of you has been rejected by someone. And we get to that today. We're going to be, uh, go a little bit deeper into the spirit of rejection because that's one of the main things that we need to deal with where you have to get healing from is rejection. Then abuse. Abuse means physical, sexual abuse where people abuse your life, do things with you, cause pain in your life, hit you, you know, um, uh, cause things in your life that, 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 that cause emotional pain, physical pain. And we are constantly surrounded by that. Many of you have been raised in homes where there was a lot of abuse. You've seen it, you've heard it, you've felt it. You tried to protect your younger brother, sister. Uh, you even tried to protect your mother from your father while he was abusing your mother. And you've seen a lot of abuse. And these things all has a tremendous effect on your personality development. And I just want you to, to get this at first. Attacks are coming right through life. And God is greater than this because he wants to heal you from every single thing of this. So don't see this in a negative. God is greater than this. Then attacks. Goes a lot with abuse, but attacks, we, we talk about you know, things that's happening around us. Um, I've been twice uh, in situations where people place a gun to your head, you know, that type of thing, and you go through shock and trauma and things like that. And every time God heals you and he re releases you from that, he takes your fear away and, and everything that goes with that. And then assault also on that level. So we are always constantly surrounded by people and a potential that you can receive pain from people. The greatest pain that you've received 
came from those who were supposed to raise you. That's the pain that has the deepest effect on your life. And it's not just the, what they did to you, it's also what they did not do to you. That actually caused the pain in your life and caused your personality to go into a swing of disorder. And actually, because your soul is now sick, it manifests in your body. And you have a lot of physical sickness in your body because this is your soul. Your body is always, listen to this, your body is always a reflection of your soul. The condition of the body, function, sickness and wellness, is the manifestation of your soul. Now, young people don't see it in the beginning. As you get older, it starts manifesting more and more. The worst your soul condition is, it shows in your body. And then it, you have a lot of physical dysfunction in your body. Actually, in the root, 90% of your physical things might all be in your soul dimension. All right, the second area of attacks that I just quickly mentioned, but it's there, it's bacterial and viruses, germs and diseases. They are all around us. You know, you can't necessarily run away from them. There's certain uh, precautions you can do. You wash every day. You wash your hands often um, because germs are flying. They are crawling. They are jumping. Germs are all over and viruses are, are going, you know, for the, the medical profession tells us that someone who has a virus, say for instance a, a flu virus, and that person is a person like many going into a taxi or a train, mixing with people to, on the way to work and so on. It says that, that that virus on one person can jump to 40,000 people in one day just by among people. And uh, so we cannot really get away from it. What you can do is make sure that they don't have an effect on you. That when it jump on you, that your system is stronger than them. And that you can work because God created your body to fight germs. Your body, if it's healthy, it can heal itself. That's how God created this body. This body heals itself. It has built-in medicine. It has systems in that everything can be healed. Cancer can be healed. Heart disease can be healed. Anything. Cell uh, things can be healed. And in the body heal itself, if you just allow it to do so. And uh, so God gave us a tremendous body if we just give it the right fuel and attention and protection, then your body can resist all these bacterial and viruses. Now it comes to us, and at times we need to fight it, and we need to take precautions with this. Then the third area of attack is the unseen spiritual world. That is what we're going to do on our next seminar on, on uh, dom uh, dominion and freedom uh, to, to overcome the enemy. Now, around us, you can't see it. I mean, here is, is bacterial attack on you. There's viruses in the atmosphere at this moment. But there's also demons. Now, hopefully, there's no demons flying around here because of our prayers and the presence of God. That, uh, that's why we pray, that's why we take authority over atmosphere and over people's life. But the reality is that wherever you go, there's always demonic spirits in every place. Your house is supposed to be clean out. Your environment where you work is supposed to be clean out because of your presence. This garden should be clean out. The snake should not be in your life. And, you know, God wants to see that you are free indeed. I just had the vision this morning... You know, last night I was talking about the wall with the cracks. And, and as I was praying, I saw the wall with a crack. And then I saw a snake that is in the crack. And as I saw this, you know, I realized the snake represents demons. You know, in a lot of cracks in our personality, there's snakes. There's demons sitting in those cracks. And that's, those cracks are actually in your soul dimension. And that's, you know, God wants to restore the crack, but he needs to take out the snake also. And, and therefore, when we have cracks in our personality, and most of us have, many times there's also a demonic attachment, or a demonic influence in that area. Now, demons are for real. Now, if you, you want to understand how to rule over them, because I don't want to teach you 
and scare you with demons. For 25 years, I'm casting demons out of people. So for us, it's like eating breakfast. I pray for people, and most of the time when I pray for people, there's some demons coming out of them. So I'm used to that. I understand that. I think I understand most of the demonic realm, uh, what happened there. We are used to that. My household, my children were little small babies. They were helping me, laying hands, casting demons out with me. So my children, for them, it was just normal life. I remember Hank was here in Standard 3, 4, and, and sitting with me in Pretoria. We had a big crowd, and it's already 12 o'clock in the night, and Hank wants to go home and sleep. So he came to help his daddy, and as a little boy, he was laying hands on people and praying in tongues because the people were on the floor and demons were coming out. So he wants to help me that we can go home. Get the demons out. And my children were raised in an atmosphere where demons are, I mean, it's just real as people. And they've learned to discern that, to see that. And it's one of the things God wants to teach you is to see in the unseen dimension. You have to have discernment. If you come into a place with people to see what is unseen. And there's attacks upon you always. You need to see that. Some of you are living in homes that's filled with demons. You don't even realize it. And when you are there in that home, there's a lot of unrest, there's no peace, there's fighting and, and things in that, that atmosphere just because of the demonic atmosphere. And it's your job to clean it out. And it's easy to clean it out. You just need to take authority and live in who you are. And, and if you walk in there, if you walk in the fullness of Christ, even before you open your mouth, demons will start running just because of who you are. And that's supposed in every area of our lives that uh, the representation of Christ in us will chase any demon away. Then the fourth area of attack is electromagnetic fields. Now, these most of you know very little about. I've studied quite a lot on it. Uh, my, my career before I became, went into ministry was in a radio radar dimension. I did my training in that and work in that on planes and in the Air Force. And uh, then some years ago, I studied also the the effect of cell phones and things on people's lives and the effect on creating tumors in the brain and so on. And it's very interesting to see the effect of electromagnetic fields on the lives of people. And how many cancers and sickness are actually caused by this in your life. You're carrying your cell phone in your pocket or on your belt. You don't realize that cell phone is actually causing dysfunction in your body. You hold it on your ear, and this cell phone is cooking your brain cells. Take two cell phones, put the egg in the middle of it, and ring the cell phones for three minutes. And you have a boiled egg. Now, for the same, put the cell phone on your ear. It's boiling your brain. Now, you know, this, this is things we don't realize, but you are constantly under attack from electromagnetic fields. It's all around you in, in the atmosphere. Here it is, and hopefully it's, it's weak enough that it has no effect on you. And carrying your cell phone is one of the most dangerous things on your body, especially the men put it here on their belt, and that's where your, your bones are, are generating white blood cells to fight diseases, and you're actually killing your white blood cells, and your body is getting weaker. Many children, you can check the statistics in the last five years, uh, children with testicle cancer have tripled and tripled because of games on their lap, and children and men getting testicle cancer because of games playing on their lap, just the, the, the electromagnetic field. So we, we don't know what is coming to you. You're standing in front of your microwave and things, and there's a lot of radiation coming to your body. You're working in an environment. There's a computer in front of you, a computer behind you, a telephone thing here and that, and everything has effect. You have a headache later, and you feel uncomfortable. You don't realize it's these electromagnetic fields that's causing the headaches, causing you to feel weak half day through, and, and you are continuously among these things, and you don't realize that it's there. Now, I'm, I don't want to go into how to, to stop it, but there's even a fifth area of attack on your life that's even worse than these four. What is that? I just want to get there. The greatest enemy is yourself. The one that causes the most destruction in your life 
is the one that's coming in disobedience to God, rebellion, pride, and sin. The moment you are disobedient, you are pride, you're sinning, you are coming in rebellion against God, the effect of that is far worse than what demons can do, what electromagnetic fields can do, what other people can do, uh, because you are destroying yourself far quicker. Why? Because God says, He disciplined us. When God disciplines us, it's worse than anything else. But He does it in such a way because He wants to restore you. And God's purpose for you is, first of all, to bless you. He desires blessings to come in your life. Now, with all those things in your life, as you see the overhead, first of all, God's blessing wants to come in your life. And when God's blessing comes in your life because you walk a way of obedience, it overcomes all those things. I'm blessed because I'm obedient, so therefore bacterial and viruses has got no right in my life, demons has got no right in my life, people who reject me and try to abuse me has got no effect on my life, um, electromagnetic fields even I cancel because of the blessing of God. I'm operating under the blessing of God that promised I will be healed, I will live a long life, I will be healthy and strong. And I need to be obedient. Obedience means I have to do my homework. Obedience might even mean you have to eat the right food. You have to sleep well. You have to do the right things. You have to deal with your finance well. Everything that you need to do obedience bring the blessings of God over your whole life. And all these things can be cancelled. And if it's not cancelled, God wants to heal it. If you are still suffering, there's demons in your life, or there's people who cause pain in your life, God wants to heal it and restore it. His blessing wants to overcome everything in your life. But for those who are walking in disobedience, the Bible says that God disciplines us. Weakness, sickness, and premature death. And that's what the Bible says. Many of us are weak, sick, and preparing for premature death. And it's part of God's discipline of disobedience. And that's the, the simple way of coming out of that discipline is obedience. You just start doing what God says, what's the right. And then you move from that place where, where weakness, sickness, and premature death will stop in your life. And I, I don't have time to go into that. I have a whole teaching on, on, on this, uh, on, on, on how God is dealing with weakness, sickness, and premature death. But it's very strongly coming from God, and many people are dying prematurely, early in their lives. Many people are constantly weak. Many people are constantly sick. And it's not the devil. I mean, the demons are helping God, but it's actually God working with you because of your way of dealing with God. If you rebel, if you ignore him, if you come against his principles, I mean, it's me, like me, dealing with my sons. When they were smaller, now they are responsible to God, indirectly to me. But when they've been disobedient, I will discipline them. So if my son did not listen to me for a certain thing I expect from them, I, I will bring in a certain measure of discipline according to the wrongdoing. If it's something that needs some pain, I will give them pain from behind. Because from the back to your brain is a shortcut. You put pain there, it changes your mind. And, uh, and I've seen it work. It worked every time. Um, and if you do it correctly, because pain must be always in the context of love, and if you do it correctly with love, then it works. It's powerful. I mean, we've run a school for many years. And I, I had to, to, to discipline the boys and these are the girls. I mean, we've, we've hit them all at the back. Not always, just for certain things they're doing wrong, for character flaws. And, uh, and it works. And, and, and pain has the powerful way of changing your mindset. And God works always with pain. So God is not afraid of pain. I mean, we, we don't like pain. We want to drink a little tablet when you have pain. God used pain to change our habits, our behavior. And God will even cause pain in your life so that he can get your attention. Through pain, he will help you to come to a place of completeness. And the more you become complete, the more less pain. 
And you can walk out of the place of pain. Pain does not need to be in your life ever. If a child is an obedient child, there's no discipline. A child that is beautiful and always obedient, doing the right things, you never have to worry about that. A child is always just happy, go lucky, go on. But a child who is in rebellion, doing their own thing, they need some rectif rectifying measures, getting them in line. Are you still here? So I just wanted you to see this picture as the many attacks that's on our lives that God is using them and the worst is then the fact that we are actually causing the greatest pain in our lives ourselves. Let's go on to what makes us what we are. In your manual, that page with all the pictures on. Don't want to spend too much time on this page just to help your brain forming some form. I'm, I'm a very practical person and I need, I'm always thinking in pictures. And uh, I want to see things in pictures, uh, drawing things and writing things. As I see it with my eyes, it helps me to understand more. And uh, I've drawn all these pictures to help actually myself to say, uh, how does we look like? The Bible says we are spirit, soul, and body. How is that working really? Because if you don't understand you are a spirit, soul, and body, you won't understand how God wants to work with you. Because today we are focusing on your soul dimension, not on your spirit. The Spirit is the one that needs to be born again through receiving and believing in Jesus Christ. Today we, be, we focus on your soul, not on your spirit. But you are living in a body. So what I said last night, your spirit is being saved. The moment you've accepted Jesus and believe in Him, your, your spirit is already saved. You are saved. Your soul yeah, is being saved now. It's a process. So you are in salvation in your soul. That's why we are here this weekend. Your body will one day be saved when it comes to full completion, when it's perfect and not full of flaws anymore. So your soul is in the process of being saved. Salvation is a process. Your spirit is already saved. Your soul is being saved. And that's, that's what you need to understand. So some of those pictures, the first one, just reflect, as uh, something of God is a trinity, He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and we are mixed with Him. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit comes and live inside you who are spirit, soul, and body. And then the second picture there on the right just reflects something of, in the middle you see the circle of the Spirit. Around that circle of the Spirit, because you are, first of all, you are a spirit being. That's your eternal being. God is spirit. You are a spirit. So spirit is the invisible part of you. Inside of you, the real person of you is the invisible one. That's not even contained within your skin. Your spirit might not even be just in your skin. It might be even up to there. If you can hear me. You are a spirit. At the moment you are living in this flesh. One day your spirit is going to live in a new body. But the eternal being what you are is a spirit. So that's invisible. But it's inside of you. You have an invisible part of yourself. And that invisible part is being regenerated, made new when you receive Jesus. And that's what the Bible calls you must be born again. And when you are born again, your spirit is made new. Then your spirit being comes into a life. And now, that's that circle in the middle. Around it, I've, I've uh, uh, put the soul, three, uh, the, the triangle. The soul consist of, and it's important to try to, to understand that, the will, emotions, and your mind. The will, emotions, and your mind. Now, those three things um, we say is your soul. Your will, what's the will? The ability to make decisions. Emotions is the ability to feel. And your mind, the ability to remember. So those three things are we call in your soul. And you will hear it a lot today as we continue because your healing is coming to those three things. God wants to heal your will because a lot of your will is being destroyed by abusing people who abused you. You can see it with adults. People get married and they are still abused by the spouse they are married to. They allow abuse because they come out of an abused household. It's interesting, people who've been abused by their parents, their father, 
a, a, a girl, let's take a girl for instance, who come out of a house of abuse, abusing father. Father who always did things, speak negative, uh, harsh, rejected. A girl that comes out of so, uh, such an abusing type of household tend to marry someone who will do exactly the same to them. Why? Because your brain in the subconscious feels safe in the abusement area. And I've studied, my doctorate was on, uh, on mate selection. Why do people choose one another in marriages, in relationships? Why do people choose one another? Why did you choose your spouse? Why did you choose the wrong spouse? Many of you choose the wrong one. Not all marriages are made in heaven. Many people choose one that's not God's purpose. And we messed up our lives with wrong choices. The greatest reason for divorce is the wrong choices. We marry people that was not on God's agenda for your life. But if two wrong people come to Jesus, he can make it the right link. And he can heal that relationship, even while it was the wrong choice. So why do people choose one another? Most people choose a spouse out of your own pain. You want that person to cover your pain. And sometimes that person is just a crutch. I need the father. I never had a father, so I marry a man that feels like a father. Or I never had a mother. I marry a woman that feels like a mother. And she must fool me. And the moment we do that, we destroy each other. Many people marry each other because they say, I cannot live on my own. I need someone. The moment you say that, it means you are codependent. It means you are emotionally retarded. You're emotionally, you cannot walk on your own. You need the crutch. So you marry someone to, to use them as a crutch to lean on. And God doesn't want you to marry someone to crutch on them. God wants you to marry someone to empower them. Because you need to be healed first. And as a healed emotional person, you, you love and marry another healed person. And two of you become a powerful unity. But most marriages cannot work because it's two broken people who hang on to one another and destroy one another. And I come back to the example of that girl who marries someone who's just like a father. I've seen people, just recently a woman who's now I think in fourth or sixth marriage, and she said she cannot understand. Every time after she's married to someone, she realized that this guy is just like a father. And she hates the father. But every time she fell in the same trap, she divorced the guy in a season of loneliness, and then she, out of the guy she meets, she likes this guy, she marries him, and then she discovers that's my father. Your brain is continuously taking you back to the place of pain. You don't even realize that you relate to pain easier than to those who are healthy. And that's why you need healing. Otherwise, you will continuously go back to the, to the wrong function in your life. You will find a husband or wife that's just as dysfunctional as your father or your mother. And you marry a person like that. Your subconscious is always seeking people to fill the gaps. And in your brain, there are certain gaps that your parents never filled, so you want friends or people to fill those gaps. And that's why we need to raise our children to be healthy. People, when they make decisions, they do it as they listen to God, and they pray, they find a spouse that's a healthy complete person. And I pray a lot for my children that, uh, I mean, two of them already came and I'm so proud and glad with them finding beautiful, dynamic wives. The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. <laughs> and they found beautiful things. And, uh, and my one son is still on the finding expedition. So if you have a daughter with a lot of money, speak to me. <laughs> That's just a joke. Um, we need to empower our children to make quality decisions. If your child starts a relationship out of their pain, that relationship will end up in destruction. And you know, most children run away out of their homes to marry someone because they want to get away from their parents. And they get in a relationship with someone just to spite the parents or anyone else. And so it's, I'm using that person just to cover up my pain. And those two people will burn out one another quickly, quickly. 
And then I don't have fun or favor in you anymore. I mean, I don't know why I've married you. You're just not my type. But we've used each other for a season as a crutch. All right, so your soul is your will, your emotions, and your mind. Now, your mind, we're going to talk a lot today, because in your mind, it's like a hard disk of a computer, for those who understand computers. And on this hard disk is a lot of information being stored. A lot of it you don't even know it's there, but it's there. Since conception, it's been there. Your brain is so unique. Your brain recorded everything since your conception. And I can prove it to you. Uh, the psychologists will prove it to you. They, uh, they hypnotize people and they take them back into the womb of their mother. And they deal with certain pain issues in the womb. Now the problem with the psychologists, they cannot really bring healing into that, that pain situation because... They think by revealing the pain, there's healing in the revelation. But there's no healing in the revelation. The healing is in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, healing the pain. So, you know, if I hypnotize you, and I tell you then after you come out of your hypnotic sleep, I tell you, yes, in your, you, you've revealed to me that when you were three years old, your father abused you and he hit you and he did this and that. And I tell you that that's not healing. It's just discovery of your pain. Now you need healing. And healing comes with forgiveness and then the power of the Holy Spirit coming to take that pain away. So hypnotherapy is, is in that way a discovery of pain and that's how they use it, but it cannot really heal the pain. They try that by hypnotherapy, by putting some suggestions in your mind. That's what hypnosis is, to put suggestions in, you know, so that the suggestions will override the pain that's in your mind. But now we've discovered something that's far more powerful than hypnotherapy. And we call him the Holy Spirit. And we take you back. I've ministered to many people that God takes in a moment back to the womb. I remember a, a, a friend of us, um, and she went through a lot of ministry. She was a, a, a Duomni's daughter, and coming out of a, a, a church uh, pastor's kit thing, uh, she had a lot of issues. It's amazing how messed up pastors, Duomni's children are many times. There's some of you maybe sitting here. My wife is one, and uh, she comes out of, her father was a Duomni, and uh, I've seen so many. You know, some of the biggest Satanists and cult leaders in the world comes out of pastors' homes. And, and pastors, for some reason, preach one thing and live another thing. And because of that, no one wants to listen to them. I don't want to hear what you say. I want to see what you live. I want to see your life. And this, this lady, we ministered to her. There was a lot of things. She, she picked up demons this is an interesting thing. She picked up a lot of demons when she was baptized as a little baby. Uh, she, the father was in a mission field, and as, as uh, the church that she came out, they baptized babies. So in that mission field, they, the day of baptism, there were some sangomas in their church. And the sangomas come and dance around the baby and lay hands also on this baby at the baptism. And this, this little baby picked up demons from this Sangoma. And it's interesting, as we started to minister to this woman, and then you must understand, she's come out of a, she's a, she's a highly church person, loved the Lord. And uh, so as we minister, these demons started to come forward. And at the beginning, we didn't know what it was. And eventually, the, the demons called themselves twins, and we didn't know what's a twin. You know, and then... Uh, the Holy Spirit revealed to us, and it's a whole long story to make it short, uh, at that baptism, these Sangomas gave the father and the mother two little drums as a gift. And these two drums were still in the house of the father as, as memories. And, and the demons who went with the drums were called twins. And these twin demons that was given to this little girl was in her and with her all the days of her life. So when we, ca we cast it out, we cancel that thing, obvious. And then at some time later, when she came back to us again for ministry, uh, she said, there's something wrong. 
that she feels very deep rejected. She doesn't know why she feels so rejected. She can't think of anything that caused her to be rejected. Her father and mother loved her a lot. It's actually her parents as beautiful people and gave her a lot of love. But deep inside, she always feels rejected. She feels a failure. She doesn't feel accepted. And I said, all right, let's pray. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to show you where's the root. Where did this come from? So she was just sitting in front of us. Very, very quick and simple. You know, I don't have to do a hypnosis thing, you know. Just close your eyes. You feel heavy. You're going to just go in hypnotic sleep. And just I will count from five to one and you will be in a deep sleep. You know, not, not that stuff. That's how they do hypnosis. Uh, for some of you who just went into sleep, just go wake again. Um, <laughs> I just said, Holy Spirit, uh, show us where this comes from. I said to her, just close your eyes. And let the Holy Spirit show you where it comes from. And she was just sitting in front of us. And suddenly I could see in her eyes, this, you know, that movement. I said, what do you see? She said, I'm in a funny place. I said, what? Where are you? She said, I don't know. It's a funny place. And she said like this. I said, Holy Spirit, just show her where she is. He said, I'm in the womb of my mother. I said, what do you feel? He said, I hear their voices. I said, what voices? She listened. She said, it's my father and mother. They are talking. I said, all right, listen. What, what are they saying? She listened. And she hear exactly. You see how quick the Holy Spirit is? He took her back to exactly. Now, we don't know how old she was. She might be a little baby like that in a womb. She might be bigger, she might be a little baby in preparation, two, three, four months old, but it's being recorded in her subconscious. She heard the father say to her mother, we can't afford this baby, it's not a time to be pregnant, I don't want this baby. And she heard the, the voice, she heard those words. And that little baby, although, remember, baby can't understand languages, but the baby picked up the sense and the spirit of rejection in one moment. And that was recorded in the subconscious of her. And she was born as a rejected baby. Even with the love that came afterwards, that rejection was still there. So when she said that, I just said, all right, uh, I want you to forgive your father for what he said. And she was crying, you know, hearing that. She said, how can he say that? I said, man, it was just, they were young. They didn't have money. So the Holy Spirit will show you why they said it, that you can understand just their emotions. They, they actually didn't mean that, but they said it. And then she just cried and she said, I choose to forgive him. Father, Daddy, whatever she said, I forgive you. And she forgave him. I said, Holy Spirit, just heal that. Take that away now. And I just pray that. And in one moment, it was actually demonic, but it just went out. It was gone in one moment. And I prayed for complete healing and receptive receptivity, that I am re I'm okay, I'm, God receive me and accept me just as I am. And God did, did it in one moment. And she was complete. I mean, it was done. And she never had that again in her life. And I know when God heals you in this way, that thing that He healed you will never come back again. Never. You will never have a problem about that thing ever. It's been taken away in one moment. And I know God is, he does a complete work. So it's not like psychologists or most of them that takes years and years trying to get you over some things. And they want to work with your, your, your low self-image. And they will talk about something. I know some, some psychologists that uh, some course that I did, they say, man, if someone is, has some rejection, they take at least three months just talking every week when they see the client about their rejection. For three months they just talk about it. I mean, obviously, they get money for every session. I say, man, bring that person. Give me three minutes. And that person will be fully free forever. And I don't even charge. You can give me a thousand rand or ten, but, but we, we don't need money for what God is doing. God wants to heal. And the church is the agent. We are the agents of the healing. You must become the agent of healing. Helping people. And you know, part of what I'm saying today is this is not difficult. It's really easy to help people. 
God wants to help us quick and effective from things that caught us and hold us. All right, back to that picture. So the triangle is your soul. Then there's, there's a, a five-point, what do you call a five-point thing? A penta. Is that what we call it in English? It's not like a pentagram of the, the Satanist, but a, a thing with five um, points. That's your five sense, senses of your body. Uh, and you have five senses, your, your feeling, your, your seeing, your hearing, your taste, and your smell. And through those five senses, everything that's in your brain has come into your brain. They are the recording systems. Everything that's in your brain came through your five senses. Things that you've heard, heard, something that you've seen. I mean, you come into a place sometimes and you smell a smell. And you, you realize, I've smelled a smell somewhere. And it reminds you of something when you were little and small. Maybe it's the smell of something that's bad. I just, uh, we were at the incident here in our offices. I smell a smell. I said this, uh, I smell death. <laughs> I want to find this smell. <laughs> it's death. <laughs> and, and, and it's actually a smell that I got from funeral places. And there's a certain smell hanging in that place. And, uh, in, and it's being on my brain. And when I, I got that smell, I said, I smell death. <laughs> Our brains are so quick. Your brain can remember anything. From a taste, a color, a room. Sometimes you walk into a place, you feel like you've been here before. Your brain is so quick. In less than a hundred of a second, your brain can remember a voice. Someone call you and you haven't spoken to this person for 30 years. And the person say, hello, Sarah. And he said, wow, Chris, is that you? And your brain, in less than a second, pick up that voice, immediately know exactly who that is. Everything is being stored here. Came through your five senses. Let's take a quick break. Just stand and stretch. In another 45 minutes, we're going to take our coffee break. Just stand and stretch a little bit.